what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, everybody doesn't have the book, but that's okay. You can get it. It's on Amazon. It's not expensive. Oh, okay. the, um, the author is Carolyn Leaf, and she is a neuroscientist. And the only reason why I'm going back, y'all, is because we have new people here, so just bear with me. Um, she's a neuroscientist, but she's also a minister, a pastor okay. as well. So what she's done is taken 30 years of her expertise, which is the brain, mm -hmm. and put them spiritually. So it's science and spirituality come together. So it's really, really good information. And I personally, she has a podcast, you can look her up. I have really, really enjoyed everything that she has been teaching on. Uh, and so that's what we have kind of adopted here, okay? So that's what we're doing today. So, one thing we're going to pick back just a little bit because we have new people. And I was just saying before you guys came in that there is no such thing as a harmless thought. Okay? okay? There's no such thing as a harmless thought. So, we need to be good stewards of our thoughts and our what? Emotions. And just to back it up for people, our mind is one thing. Hey, cutie. Our mind is one thing. And what else? Our brain is something else. Right. Those two are separate, separate things. It is not your brain problem. It is our mind causing the problem, okay? Our mind is the way, the, our brain consists of, it's an organ. But our mind is simply how we think, how we feel, and how we choose. Think, feel, and choose make up that, okay? Our mind is influenced, our brain is influenced by what our mind tells it. So in essence, you can let it run. The, in essence, the mind is the conduit to feed the brain. Y'all get that? The mind feeds the brain. The brain is just an organ. It just sits there by itself. It won't bother nothing, it won't do nothing until it gets the conduit to feed it. So what are you feeding your brain? Okay. Now we also learn that when we have a sick mind or we feed it sick things, sick thoughts, it makes what? Our body sick. Okay. I think they said somewhere around 95 or 98 percent of all cancers are caused by thinking, negative thinking. Now ain't that something? Thinking, negative thinking. Hey baby. So. Um, with that being said, not only does it cause those kind of things, but we know that it causes what high blood pressure, causes digestive issues, it causes you know immune compromised issues. We all because it started out with how we're thinking. So there's more reasons why we should want to change because we only get this one earth suit. You only get this one time to be here on earth in this body. Okay, so if we tear it up quick, it's because we're not doing what we're supposed to do. And we know that stress breaks down the body. Amen? Stress, too much stress will break it down. The wrong kind of stress. So, um, so today we're gonna pick up with, uh, let let's read, We'll give you a little homework assignment before you. I want each of you to know, ask these questions. What does it mean to you? And we're going to start with Proverbs 19 and 2. So somebody just pull that one up, and we're going to read it. Okay? Now here, we learn, we talk, we dialogue, we research, because that's what Bible study is about. Amen? It's about learning. It's not no right or wrong. It's going deeper in learning about God. Okay? Well, anybody want to read Proverbs 19 and 2? Also, that the soul be without knowledge it is not good. He that has patience with his feet sinneth. Hmm. Read it one more time for it. Also, that the soul be without knowledge. The soul. Now, what is our soul? Remember. Our mind, our will, and what? Our emotions make up our soul. 
Right? So now, read it one more time. Also, that the soul be without knowledge. It is not good, and he that hates it with his feet sins. So it's not good for our soul to be what? Without knowledge. So ignorance is the perfect word. And ignorance means what? You just don't know. You just don't know, okay? Okay? Nobody won't be called ignorant, but really just means you don't know. All right? All right. Go ahead, brother. Did you finish it? Yeah. Okay. Did y'all get everybody get it? Mm-hmm. Proverbs 19 and 2. Now, let's read up. Now, anybody want to expand what does that mean to them? Which, huh? Without knowledge, you endeavor to do anything without knowledge. You can understand. You can mess it up. I mean, not intentionally, but, you know, you say, a sin is a sin. Right? So. What? Before you jump into something, at least learn about it. At least, you know. Learn what you're going to do before, before you do it. What it is, what you're going to do, why. You probably make better decisions if you know, if you to be knowledgeable know. about something, right? right. Mm-hmm. The other thing knowledge does, it also prevents the enemy from using something against you, like, because you know the truth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay? Once you learn something, can't nobody. <laughs> Unlearn it from you. It's like experience, you know what I mean? Right. So, he could never, if you have knowledge of something, then he can't twist it on you and you fall for it. Right. Like the beginning, like Adam and Eve. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He was able to what? Twist the word. And, and because she knew it, she heard it because Adam told her, right? Yep, yep. Okay. So she knew it, but he was able to tweak it because it went down in her. It went down in her. Okay? So knowledge is power. That's what they used to say. You know, they used to say in school, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Yeah, that's why we go to school because we gain knowledge. But it's only power when it applies. Do it for the book. <laughs> Ashley got it. Ashley got it. can't go nowhere. Oh, okay. right there. Ashley got it. So knowledge is power only if it's applied. Now, how many people know you can get a whole bunch of book sense and don't apply it if it does no good? Just because you have knowledge don't mean you, you're going to do that. There is practicality to go with the knowledge. Right? It, it's only something when we apply it. Just like faith. It's only something when you do something. It's an action. Okay? All right. Proverbs 16 and 2. All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord is the spirit. Oh, wait a minute. So now, all of a man's ways, what? To clean to who? To yourself. That means what? We can justify anything. <laughs> That's exactly what that means. That means that me, myself, and I get on one accord. I can take my knowledge and I can make it fit whatever it is that I want it to do. Isn't that something? And you think about this in uh, in latter days, and I'm sure it still happens now, but in the day of old, we had people who would read the Bible to a certain group of people who couldn't read. Mm-hmm. And then they interpret it and tell them exactly what it means. Right. And so the person is what? Believing whatever the teacher yeah. is telling them that. But remember the spirit wasn't involved in this at all. This was all my knowledge and your knowledge. And we're going back and forth. Yeah. And depending on what my motive is, oh, I can control people. Amen? Can y'all see that? Mm-hmm. See that. Exactly. It definitely controls. Now, it says all of the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the what? The spirit. He don't even, God ain't even interested in what you're thinking about. It. He, he's looking at the spirit behind it. Amen? And just know 
that the Holy Spirit what is your help. Mm -hmm. And the help can't help you if you don't allow it. He tried to help you. He tried to lead you to the all truth. He tried to what? Comfort you. He's trying to give you peace. That's his job, right? Yeah. But because I think I know, I'm not going to rely on my spirit man. I'm trusting my head man. And that's a dangerous thing. Because now we got a whole bunch of people walking around here on earth that think they know and lost as a goose. Don't know anything. No, no, nothing. And then guess what? Have the influence that I can lead you. So then you lead her, and you got a whole bunch of people on what? On the wide gate yeah. going down the wrong street. Yeah. Because ain't nobody connected to the spirit. Does that make sense? The blind lead the blind is a perfect way to say that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I will go to another scripture, but check this out. Research shows that around four deep thinking exercises over a period of 21 days help create long-lasting change. Remember, this is just what? A rehearsal. We're down here, we're rehearsing, right? And we could be rehearsing things the wrong way. Then you start hearing people saying, oh, that's just that way we always did. Y'all yeah. mm -hmm. heard that before? Mm -hmm. That's real prominent in government. It's very, we always did it that way. We didn't try to do it no different because I have rehearsed it and learned and learned it that this is the way it is. And because it was good yesterday, we closed our mind for thinking that change is needed. Mm -hmm. How many of you know we should always be evolving? We should always be changing. Amen? You got something? No, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to you. I'm receiving you. Oh, okay. <laughs> One of the things that jumped off, just jumped off the page is that, yes, that is routine. Uh, we get into habit forming. 21 days of doing something routinely it become a habit. It does. A way of life, a practice. But isn't that the motive? Isn't that the uh, intent of the demons? Isn't that, isn't that their intent of Satan to create a negative or improper way of doing something so that it, it may become habit forming? And once it becomes habit forming, it becomes your way of life. And, and that means your lifestyle becomes opposite of God. So when we compare that to the to society that we live in today and some of the bad habits and some of the bad things that's going on in our community, couldn't we equate that to Satanism being more into more into control of our lifestyles, which which is manifest in our thinking. And remember, we're talking about the influence in our mind. Now take that same concept and think about it about your environment. Mm -hmm. Everybody in your little circle negative. Mm -hmm. Everybody negative. Everybody you know, you leave your mama's house is full of negativity. Then you go to your cousin's house, and guess what? They act just like you. So you have generations of generations of the same environmental concept feeding up. Now, if it takes 21 days to create a habit, just 21 days, three weeks, 21 days, what happens when we do it 21 months? Okay, let's do 21 years. So do you remember what you was before? So, no, this is who you are. This is the new you. Negative, pessimistic, toxic. Nobody want to be around you. And if people do want to be around you, guess what? They just like who? You. Remember what I was saying? Words of a fellow? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Do you see that's true? And you know the sad part about that? Is we don't see it within ourselves. Correct. We so right, we so upright in right. our standing and our views of ourselves that we don't see that old pessimistic mindset or that behavior or that attitude <laughs> but that taking control of us. Correct. We still scream and shout, I love the Lord, I praise Jesus, but we're still copycatting something that's not us. Because we've been practicing. Remember, we've been rehearsing. This is a rehearsal. So we're practicing what we know. We ain't getting new knowledge. I'm getting what my mama told me. I'm seeing what my dad is doing. I'm looking at what my cousin is. So guess what? I am a byproduct of my what? Environment until I want to break away from that and know that I have the ability to think, feel, and choose and I can choose differently until I realize that I am not who they say I 
But who God say I am, I'm not going to get better. That's right. Period. Right. Not going to get better. Not at all. You got to know who you really are first. And who you really are. Your mom and daddy are just vessels to get you on this planet. But that ain't who you really are. You really made in the image of the Father who is what? Spirit. So until we become more spiritual beings, operating in the natural state, instead of putting the natural first and learning about the spirit, we're going to always be toxic to me. You are spiritual first. You are spiritual first. Even though I see you in my natural, you are spiritual. And because he made you in his image, there's nothing separating you from him. You just got to connect to him. He's already connected to you. You just got to know he's there. And you got to what? That's where faith comes in. You got to believe that he exists. Does that make sense? With, with one modification. Go ahead, man. There is something separating you from, from you and him. But because right. of Christ, that separation has been destroyed or has been defeated. That separation was sin. Correct. You know, and <laughs> even though you were made in this image, Correct. he had to put a roadblock on us because if we had taken from the tree of life with that sinful nature, we would have sinful nature for the rest of our life. Our eternity. So he had to separate us from that possibility of giving the tree of life and, and bridge the gap between us and Christ. In other words, he gave us a way to the tree of life. Amen. And that's Christ. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. the depth of it. And then there's something else that you were saying. Cause we, we, we are made in his image, but I always go back to Noah and, and after the flood. In the Genesis 8 chapter and 21, uh, it reads as simple as this. And when that, when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, yeah. this is after the flood, after everything had been destroyed and the people were on the boat and they was getting off the boat, the Lord said, in his heart, this God talking uh -huh. to himself now, he, he, he's talking to himself, in his heart, I will never again, I will never again curse the ground because of man. God cursed the ground because of what Satan did that caused man to deviate. He penalized Satan because man made a decision to do opposite of what it is that he desired for him to do. But here God is saying, never again would I curse the ground because of man. In other words, I'm not going to curse what's already been cursed by your actions or what decisions you make from this day forward. Mm -hmm. And here's why. He said, because a man for the intention of man's heart, a man's heart is evil from his youth. That's why it's so important for us to get this knowledge, to get this understanding. That's why it's so important for us to train up our children according to the scriptures because when we fail to train them, we allow the youth of their imagination to take control. And even you know and I know when you don't know something, you gravitate to anything that's pleasing or, or attractive to you. Right. And Satan was beautiful. Yeah. So those things that are attractive to you are beautiful in your eyesight. You know? yeah. So yeah. Satan tempts you with the things that is beautiful to you. That's it right. don't necessarily mean it's good for you, no. but it's beautiful you. You can right. find that beautiful woman. She wasn't the one that was for you. She right. just satisfied your desire, your appetite. Amen? And, Go ahead, sister. I'm sorry. And, no, no, that's right. And the other thing about satisfying that your desire is really not true. It's not really satisfying because you do it again. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you yeah. satisfy, you're going to keep going back. <laughs> correct. Right? Yeah. Correct. <laughs> correct. That's correct. That's exactly right. So, so that's really a misnomer by itself. Mm -hmm. So that just gives us an excuse for keep what? Keep doing, trying to get that what? Satisfaction. That's temporary. Justified. And then we justify it, we just know, Proverbs 16, 2, all of a man's way seem what? Right to him. Oh, yeah, I can justify everything. We know it would never be like the first time. The first time they have to install an attack. But you still keep looking for You keep looking for this. Yeah, and if you're holding on to the remembrance, in your memory bank. Yep, it's there. And if you don't. Remember, your mind is the way you think, feel, and 
choose. And if you don't choose and you don't sweep your brain, sweep that thought away by saying, nope, I'm not going to entertain that. Nope, I'm not going there. Nope, nope, nope. It won't leave you. It'll stay there. And if it's staying there, you become a byproduct of what you eat. Mm -hmm. Right? So, referring to this uh, law, this book, my brain, I was reading, uh, and it says here that information stays in the hypocampus, which is like a, it, the hypocampus is in your brain, okay? And it's like a shape like a little seahorse. <laughs> but it's, it, its job is uh, principally is about uh, holding long-term memories, okay? For memories. All right. But it says that the hypocampus, it stays in the hypocampus for 24 to 48 hours, constantly being amplified each time it swirls to the front. So go to the back to the front, back to the front. Just keep bringing it back to your, your memory, right? This allows us, check this out, this allows us two days, two days. How many hours? Two days is what, 48 hours? All right, two days to do something with the activated thought or that memory before it sinks back into the non-conscious to become even more toxic than before. Isn't that something? Look at your fish story. Each time you tell that story. Then you change, does it? Come back and they change it in. Isn't that something? Read that again. Read that again. This is deep. Okay. All right. Put my hip up. All right. Information stays in the hypocampus for 24 to 48. That's one in two days. Constantly being amplified each time it swerves to the front. So from the back to the front of your brain. Back to the front. Back for 24 to 48 hours, okay? This allows us two days to do something with that memory before it sits back into our non-conscious to become even more toxic than before. Woo! That's scary, isn't it? Yeah. Two days. Swirling around, going back. And when it settles after then, it becomes more toxic than it was before. So now it's not a little bit, a little bit of uh, flame, it's a fire. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine how anger gets built up. You weren't even feeling that bad about it before, but the more you thought about it, <laughs> the worse it gets. Woo! <laughs> Just say, I'll say anything. <laughs> Information stays in the hypocampus. Remember, and 
Remember what type of character is? It's for restoring memories or for long-term memories. It stays in there for 24 to 48 hours, constantly being amplified each time it swirls to the front. This allows us two days to do something with that activated memory before it sinks back into our non-consciousness to become even more toxic than before. So resistant to forgetting. So when you say toxic, that's an indication that that's a negative memory. Correct. Right? Absolutely. Yes. A negative memory mm -hmm. that, that's going back and forth, back and forth for two days, which right. is 48 hours, correct? Correct. Well, look at what Matthew 12 and 43 says. When the unclean spirit is gone out of man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Now, let's go forward. Mm -hmm. What does the next verse say? Then he said, I will return into my house. From whence I came out. Yeah. And when he is come, he findeth it empty and swept and garnished. Huh. Huh. Now, what else did he say? <laughs> then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked <laughs> than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. Uh -huh. This is in the mindset that he once was at. <laughs> and when that spirit of negativity is just going back and forth, back and forth, in other words, we're bouncing back and forth in our thoughts. This anger that builds up the frustration and the anger and the attitude that makes us want to attack. Can you imagine a young person not having the full knowledge of what forgiveness is really all about or the experience of a forgiveness for their own actions, let alone forgiving somebody else? And they're wrestling with this opinion right here that's going back and forth that says, I want to respond because they did me this way, they did me that way. How do we change that if we don't give them this understanding that, right. that this evil mindset is going to lead you when you take on the right things? But if you don't put something in there, right? Right. And, and guess what? That same process that it did for that 24 to 48 hours swirling around back and forth and on hypocampus, those could be positive thoughts too. They could be. Yeah. Right. Except for when they talk. See, you can't, well, I'm yeah. saying you can change it. Remember, you, you can store whatever memory. It don't have to be negative. It's the same process whether it be negative or positive. Your brain is still going to do what it's supposed to do. The chemicals are still going to be released. It's still going to sweep. It's still going to store. But what, it, what are you going to allow it to store? That's where your choice is. Because the, the seahorse, the hypocampus is not negative. It's just the organ to do its job. It's just doing, good. It's just doing whatever. It's, it's like the dog's disposal. It's like getting fed and it's sifting through and doing what it's supposed to do. But the job is to put it in the long term memory. So, what are you going to allow to be there? So, how, how do we make this change, sister? How do we, how do we put this into action? Yeah, how do we, you know, well, make, it, make it apply over. Well, one thing we got to do, first of all, we're getting knowledge. One, so now we're no longer what? Ignorant to the devices that he uses. Okay? Now we know that our mind is the way we think, feel, and choose. And choose. We're not going to operate in just our feeling, but we're going to choose better, right? Right. If we think better, we will choose better, right? Right. right. And we'll act better because we think better, right? Right. So we learn that those little things now is just up to us to learn how to put them, rehearse them. Because it's not going to come easy for you because your environment is not going to let you get it. Wow. If you in negativity. Wow. It's going to be up to that individual to say, ah, stop, no more, I'm through. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of my own self. I'm not with it anymore. You should have called me yesterday. But today it was a new day. Yeah. And greater is he that's what? That's within me than he that's in the world. Come on. So I have the power. It's just how long y'all gonna quit not using the power? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Right. I'll tell you, I just love God. He's something awesome. He is some kind of awesome. So, it says further in the book, so neuroscience highlights the biblical principles. Now, 
done. It's neuroscience now. The biblical principle that we must be responsible for in our thought life. Bringing every thought into what? Captivity. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. That's what that is. And what else? Renewing our minds. Romans 12 and 2. Remember? That's how I turn scripture. It is through thought thinking that changes in our brains are made. It is through thought thinking that changes in our brain are made. It is within thought thinking. It is through thinking that changes in our brains are made. Remember last week we talked about how if you, this is neuroscience now, this is science showing that if you take 12 minutes, and I've been doing this to you. I, I drive to work and it's about 20 some minutes. And I drive home at night. You know what I do? I start praying that whole time here. And it's probably more than 12 minutes for this. But they're saying 12 minutes a day. For how many days was it? Seven. Let's see, how many days was it last week? Uh, I'm going to have to find it. If we put 12, we focus 12 minutes a day for seven days or 21 days? 21 days. 12 minutes for 21 days. Seems like that's long. That it actually changes your brain scan. On your CAT scan. Physically. Isn't that something? 12 minutes of prayer. Can change, start changing your physical brain. Your physical brain is not just because you had depth and then showing that when we do stuff like that, it actually, re, your brain is able to rejuvenate itself. <laughs> rejuvenate itself. Because of what we did. You're fine.
And I know um, some people think, well, you know, you may be a little boring for science and stuff like that. It's like, oh, I don't want to hear about the science stuff, but it really makes sense in learning how intricate and wonderfully God has made each and every one of us. Okay? That you weren't just not thought of. He thought of everything you need to survive on this side. And to keep, help us keep our earth suit better. Our body, right? Mm -hmm. Alright. So change transformed the physical structures of the brain. And when we do that, that science says it's called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is when we actually, the brain changes, okay? Because thinking, which brings about the change called genetic expression, proteins are made, and important transmitters, neurotransmitters, which are chemicals in the brain that carry electrical impulses to flow. It is through thinking that changes in our brains are made. So God has designed us to be able to literally think about our thinking to change the, to the toxic thoughts. The way he has set this up is that you have to do your own thinking and change it. So people can influence you, but no one except you can renew your mind. Isn't that so? So according to neuroscience, science, it takes 21 days to break down and create a new thought. So a period of 21 days of deep thinking exercises per thought or set of thoughts create long-lasting change. Remember, that's just saying we're rehearsing. We're rehearsing it. We're rehearsing. Now 21 days, it's going to get easier and easier and easier to do. So basically what we're doing is we're detoxing the way we think. Okay? Detoxes is important, right? Because we detox and we're getting away from what? What we getting fed or what we let in into another realm. So that means we got to separate from some of the stuff we've been doing. Okay? It gets easier the more you try it. It doesn't get, it, here's the thing, it doesn't work if you don't ever apply it. It will work but you won't know it will work because you, what, justify why you're not going to do it. Oh, that's just science. That don't have nothing to do with God. Yes, it does. Well, see how I just talked myself out of not doing something? <laughs> that I know could, could help me. Just because nobody in my circle do it. Be the change you want to see. That's right. And, and sometimes, oftentimes, that does mean you need to step back and separate from it. And sometimes some of those who see you should be saying, look, we'll follow you. And they see what? Because they don't see the light that's within you that's going to shine. They don't know something different about James. Because James ain't acting like James normally acts. James don't even think that's funny, all the dirty jokes we were doing. James tend to walk away now. We know this, James. You know? James might not go up and say, walk around and say, hey, I'm of the Lord. But he's going to do something. I'm, like, I'm sorry, I'm going to do that. Well, why? Don't you think that counts a change? Yeah, they're going to be like, believe me, somebody's always watching you. Always. Always. And that's God, too. <laughs> he, he, he definitely watching us. We can't even hide, right? So what is Proverbs 4 and 7? Because it's an instruction. Proverbs what? Proverbs 4. 4 and 7. Second or seven? seven? Seven. Sorry. Four and seven. Isn't it? 
Wisdom is the principal thing. What? Wisdom is the principal thing. Mm. Therefore, get wisdom. Get what? Wisdom. Get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Get wisdom and then get what? Understanding. Understanding. How are we going to get that? What's James 1 and 1 and 3? I think that's right. Pull a scripture up. Uh, if any man seeketh wisdom, I think it's James 1. Amen. If the wind wasn't blowing, the water would be still. Mm -hmm. 